Alright, hey, I'm going to be showing you how to find um, the sum of a sequence that's in the form of summing every positive whole number integer where each value in the sequence is being raised to the same power i. So, it's pretty nice technique to doing this. All you're going to have to know to really get this are the binomial expansion and summation properties, which you don't really have to do much research on. It's pretty logical. You can probably get it just from watching this video. So, first thing you're going to have to know, you're going to see why it's useful in a bit, is that sum for k is equal to 1, every whole number of positive integer from k equals 1 to n of k raised to the ith power of um, minus k minus 1 raised to the ith power is actually going to equal this upper limit and raised to the ith power. So how you can figure that out on your own is just consider this sequence on its own. So like, you're starting when k equals 1, so that would be 1 to the i minus 0 to the i, which is 0, right? You know that. Uh, 2 to the i, well I really should say, plus 2 to the i minus 1 to the i, plus 3 to the i minus 2 to the i, and so on. And we're going to stop at the nth term, which is going to be, well, from here, if we stopped here, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So it's going to be n to the i minus n minus 1 to the i. Right? So, how you can figure out this, I mean, you just look at the terms, right? You've got a 1 to the i here, minus 0. Really, this cancels out the second term, and you're just left with 2 to the i, which is the value of n. If you were to stop here, that'd be n equals 2, right? If you go to the third term, the 2 gets cancelled out, and you're left with 3 when n equals 3. In fact, it's going to keep going all the way up until you get to n, where it would be equal to the n to the i. So you can see that this identity holds true. So leave that up there. Um, this is actually going to be relevant for the binomial expansion because it's going to let you get rid of the highest power of k in the expansion of k minus 1. Right? If you could, and you're using the law that two equivalent expressions are also going to have an equivalent sum. Uh, so, first I'll show you what it's like if you were to use uh, just i is equal to 1, right? So, you, I'm assuming you know, you know something about the binomial expansion already, so, k minus 1. Binomial expansion is just the same thing, right? So, really use the value of i you're using on k minus 1 is going to be 1 greater than the value of i on the sum that you're going to try and find. So, you know this. This is always going to be true for any value of uh, the upper limit n or the exponent i, right? So, we can reorganize it to get into the same sort of expression we have here. Which means we're going to move this over, over to this side. We're going to move the 1, the negative 1, over to this side, making it 1, right? So, k minus k minus 1 is equal to 1, right? And so, if you were to put any value of k in, these two things are always going to be equal, so then the sum from the same lower and upper limit, or from the same lower limit to the same upper limit, will also be equal.
And we know on the left side here that it's going to be equal to n of the same power that you have k sub n equal 1, which is equal to the sum of k equals 1 to n of 1. And you could approve this logically, right? Because really what you're saying here is for each value of k from 1 to n, every whole number, you add 1, right? That's what the language means, so... And there are n numbers between 1 and n, right? If we made it k equals 0, the answer would be n plus 1, because there are n plus 1 numbers between 0 and n, as opposed to there being n numbers between k equals 1 and n. So now we have this identity, and we're going to use that identity to prove um, actually the sum from k equals 1 to n of k. So we can write this up here, the sum of k equals 1 to n of 1 is equal to n. And really it's just a method of finding any power of i. And well, k raised to the i-th power. In this case, we found k raised to the power of 0, right? The sum of k to 0. So, to prove the next one, we do the binomial expansion of uh, k minus 1 to the power of 2, which is just going to equal, um, well, 2 choose 0, k squared minus minus 1, I'm just going to carry the minus out, you know, if uh, the value is even, negative 1 to the power of some even number is just going to be 1, and if it's odd, in this case it is 2 choose 1, that's odd, this number, odd, um, then really erasing negative 1 to the, in brackets, all 2. Um, an odd number, and if you multiply a negative number an odd number of times, you're going to end up with that negative number, and negative 1, no actual coefficient, just makes a negative, right? So, so minus that, and then, well, plus 2 choose 0, negative 1 to the 2 kind of feels silly right in it, but, which is just equal to k squared minus 2k plus 1, right? So, and that's all equal to k minus 1 squared, right? So we're doing the same thing here. We're going to reorganize that k squared, remove that to the side, these terms to the other side, so k squared minus k minus 1 squared is then equal to 2k minus 1, right? And again, two equivalent expressions must have an equivalent sum. So, as long as the lower and upper limit are the same, logically. So here's where you sort of need to know more about the properties of summation. I mean, still, we're making this side just equal to n to the i-th power, which in this case is 2, so that's all going to equal n squared, which is going to equal the sum of k equals 1 to n of 2k minus 1. So we can actually split up this um, sum, right? So the sum of 2k minus 1 is the same as the sum of 2k minus the sum of 1, right? <clears throat> you could just try writing out some numbers. I mean, it's pretty logical. So 
n squared is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of 2k minus the sum. Right, we just factored out a negative 1 because we're trying to get uh, the expressions that we already know how to evaluate here. So we're actually going to reorganize for the sum of k equals 1 to n. And also we can factor out constants. You can also try that. Just write out some numbers. If you were to multiply the final sum by um, some factor that's in all of those things after you've divided out that factor, of course, you're going to get the same value. So try it. k is equal to n squared and we're going to put this over here right so it's plus the sum of k equals 1 to n but I'm going to replace that with what we already know it to be which is n right so I'm going to put that in brackets so I've, I've substituted for something there so then we can just divide both sides by 2 like we already know so Plus 1 to n of k is therefore equal to n squared plus n all over 2. And just to get it the same way you'd see it in probably a textbook or if you were to look at something online, then the sum from k equals 1 to n of k is equal to n times n plus 1, just factoring out the n there all over 2. Right, so now we can add this to um, sums that we already know. And once you know these things, it's cool because you can use them to find the sum formulas for uh, arithmetic sequences. Just knowing how to write out the general term in that, you can figure that out. So I'll actually just write this down here. So the sum from k equals 1 to n of k is equal to n times n plus 1 all over 2, right? And then we can just go, we can keep doing that. Technically we can do it forever and ever and find i to the infinity the sum of k equals 1 to n of k to the infinity. You can never get to infinity, because infinity is a concept, not a number, right? So, but we could go as high as we really want, so. So, start out with the um, binomial expansion of k minus 1 to the 3, which would equal 3 choose 0, k to 3, minus 3 choose 1, um, k squared, plus 3 choose 2, k minus 3 choose 3, yeah, 1. is also going to be equal to just replacing the choose notations. That would be equal to k3 minus 3k squared plus 3k minus 1, right? And so we're basically just cycling between these same uh, logical ideas and uh, just repeating the process there. So again we have two equivalent expressions. We can use algebra to reorganize this expression to get k minus k minus 1 to the 3 because we know a nice property about that. It's going to let us simplify any um, the sum. If you are trying to find some formula using binomial formula, it's 
getting rid of the highest powers, right? So, you know, k to 3 minus k minus 1 to 3. Move everything else to the other side. We're summing it. Plus. So sum from k equals 1. So again, we're putting that in for that, and we can, you know, expand and distribute just to, I'm just going to do this a lot quicker. So I'm going to factor this out, and I'm going to put, I'm starting on this side now, by the way, and I'm just bulldozing right through it, so should be checking this, really. Seeing that you get it, see, seeing that you get what I'm doing here. That was just in for that. So, uh, well, that's a lot of rain. squared is actually going to be equal to n to the 3 minus n from that. Yeah, I'm going to put that over there and make that n. I've actually forgot a k there. Hope some of you noticed that. Um, so now minus the n plus 3 times, and we're substituting now for what we know, the sum of, uh, from k equals 1 to n of k is, right, so plus 3 times the sum over there, so that'd be n, n plus 1, all over 2, great, um, 